All right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Happy Thursday. Um, my name is Christina Sampson. Uh, you can also call me Tina for short. I am the communications and design specialist with the United Nations SDG Action Campaign. So I see you've already met my colleague, Guyan, who did the webinar the other day. We worked together. Um, and with the UN SDG Action Campaign, I've been for more than five years, actually. So time has really flown. And I've been um, helping with the Asia Pacific Advocates Program for the past few years, which has been very exciting. Um, I'm really excited by all of development goals. Um, there's a lot of information. So I will stop every now and then to answer some questions. And I will also show you, as Nadine said, there's many links in the presentation. So try to follow if you can. Otherwise, um, you can also click through them later. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm going to start to share my screen now. And um, let me see here. Resume share. Um, present. Great. Um, yes. Can you see my screen? Great. Yes, yes, we can. I'm going to stop my video right now. Okay, um, so um, this is the training webinar on digital storytelling, communication, photography, and design skills. Uh, one second. All right, so there's a lot of text on here, but I just wanted to first tell you about humans of my world. So by now, everyone's familiar with the My World survey, I hope, which is the very very important survey where you ask people about um, what's most important to them and their families. But in addition to the survey, we have a whole storytelling initiative around my world to help capture really compelling content and stories. Um, Nadine, can you hear me okay? Just want to make yes. sure. We can hear you Perfect. just fine. All right. Great. So I just want to give everyone some background. We actually started this Humans of My World program actually back in 2014 even before the sustainable development goals were adopted. Um, so it's been a project going on for a while and we're, and it's really an exciting project. So here I just gave a little bit of an overview that we've worked with individuals like you, United Nations agencies, um, NGOs, youth advocates to capture the sentiment of individuals around the world. So what they really feel about the goals and what it means to them. Um, we've actually have curated over a thousand stories from 50 countries. So this is a mix of partnerships we've had all over the world. And these stories, we actually take the best of best ones and we feature them in exhibits and campaigns online and around the world. Um, just to mention, we also have another part of the program where we partner with Canon, uh, the camera company, um, for a program called the Young People Program. So they actually work to train young people and they do workshops and mostly right now focused in Europe. But um, we actually take that content and we include it as part of the, of the database. And that's actually, I'll show you here. Um, here's a map where you can see the at least 50 countries that we've captured stories from, from all over the world, from people like you who have went out into their communities or to their schools or to their jobs or to their neighborhoods or to their families or wherever to capture these powerful stories. So by um, being in this, you're part of this movement for these really compelling stories. Um, just a little bit of information about why this is important. We want to show the human faces and the stories behind the My World data. So this shows that the SDGs are all about the people. Um, the photo testimonies and stories are about what matters most to individuals from, from all over the world. This also helps to create empathy and show how important the SDGs are for people. These bring, this brings people's voices into the discussion because we share these stories with leaders. And it also backs up the data with picture and stories. So this is just a little bit of the reason it's important. Um, now I'm gonna sh start to show some examples because with examples, you'll see it better. Um, some of the photos you see on these slides are also uh, humans of my world stories. So here's the first slide that has a lot of links. Um, I want to first show uh, this link here. Um, 
which is uh, Twitter. Um, a grouped list of some tweets that we created. Um, in addition to tweets, we also put them on Instagram and LinkedIn and all of our social media. I'm just going to scroll, scroll through really quickly, but we're going to go into some of them in detail. And some of you may have seen these stories because um, we actually use them to promote for the new group of advocates, which is you. So here's just an example of some of them, and these were created by, by advocates in the program. So here's an example of a photo of an indigenous girl in the Philippines and a quote about her. It's a very powerful quote saying, she advocates for people's histories, appreciation of their own rich and diverse cultures. So I just wanted to show you that this is an example of what um, some of the photos could look like. Um, and that's, that's a tweet. And that's one link. And I'm, another link I'm going to show you here is the Flickr gallery, which I will explain a bit more later. Here, there's actually many photos from, that were submitted from the last group. And these, are, these pictures you can actually download high, high resolutions from Flickr, and you can use them when creating your own materials and your own promotional things. So if you click the picture, um, you can actually press this arrow here at the bottom right and you can download the photo and in the and in the description it has the quote there so you can use this content and translate it or use it for social media materials which we'll explain a bit more later so this is the contributed content from before um, just gonna go back and um, oh and one more link here this is just for reference um, here is another Flickr gallery. This is not only the Asia Pacific program. These are stories from all over the world. So this is a selection of some of them from many different places. Um, and, and some of them are made by youth. Some of them are made from partnerships. So as you can see, there's a mix of different pictures. So this is all just for reference so you can get, uh, you can see what some of the pictures are like. Um, I'm going to stop right now really quickly. Um, any questions right now? It looks like there are no questions so far, but there will, if there are any questions, Christina, I will, I will show my face on the video and interrupt you. But so far, no Great. questions. Okay. So now I actually want to go back and show you a couple of these stories that we have promoted. Um, here's an example of one story from the Philippines that I that you saw briefly earlier um, and here I mean if you see her quote um, I just want it's a very powerful quote as an urban indigenous youth I advocate for the recognition of our people's histories and the appreciation of our own rich and diverse cultures I as many others stand to show that we are still here and that we are not gone and those of us who are privileged enough to speak should do so so others can too uh, I just want to show that this is was taken at a at a conference, but um, the quote from this girl was actually very long, which is great because sometimes you may want to do longer interviews. Um, I actually just took a short quote from her longer thing and I used it to create the social media card to promote it because for social media, um, short and powerful quotes work much better. So this is just an example of a couple just so that you can see a few. ones. Uh, here I wanted to show you that um, the advocate submitted it in English and also in Thai. And if you are able to capture the stories in your local language, native languages, and also in English, we highly encourage that because we'd like to have the content in all the language uh, languages. And here, um, you know, it's a, you see the girl right there, you see her very clearly, and she has a story about how she used to live in the countryside where a lot of kids have an incomplete life because of lack of education. And she's talking about why education is so important. So these are just a few examples to inspire you about um, some ways, but there's so many different ways you could do this, which I will explain. Uh, another, and this one I like is you see,
Um, it's a really compelling story and it's something really important to him. And if you see here, um, I put the, the SDG icons of stuff that was related to his uh, testimony. So these are just examples. These are just examples. Um, I'm going to sh now share some tips and there, I'm actually gonna go through many tips it's a lot of information, so just bear with me. Um, and these are all uh, ways to help you improve when you're taking photos or if you're collecting photos from others, if you are an online advocate, which I will also explain how you can collaborate if you are an online advocate. Um, there's a lot of text here, so I'm just going to give a quick overview with this. This, um, and I'll show you examples um, there you can do different ways number one you can take a up-close picture or you can also take a full body shot sometimes if you're not sure you can take both and pick which one you think looks good and it depends um, in different contexts you can see which one would look better uh, show a variety in background and angles um, if you're in a if you're taking photos, it's nice to see that the background is different so that they don't all look the same. Uh, action shots are good. Um, if you are interviewing someone, let's say a farmer, and if they're you know, doing some gardening or doing some tasks or doing something out in the fields, that captures what they're doing and that tells more than just a picture that, of them not doing any actions. Um, look around your surroundings and see what's interesting, what stands out. And here's something that's very important, and I will show some examples. Make sure the head and the face are clear and well lit. Sky or solid background behind their head. So I'm just going to show some examples um, that to think about. Um, here, for instance, this is an action shot. This is, uh, this is from UNDP. This is a bit different and you can also take photos like this. It doesn't need to be straight up uh, a zoom into their face. Um, something to think about is does the image tell a story? Uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but it is no less true. So by creating photos like this that tell a story, um, you can, you, it also makes it powerful. Um, here's something very important is the framing of the image. Um, here's some advice. It says our eyes are drawn naturally to subjects that are foregrounded and contrasted against the background. This gives the image a strong feeling of depth and established context and settings. Um, and nowadays, a lot of phones, you can adjust the, there's like special zoom where you can blur the background. You can choose to do that. I recommend if you're in a, if it's a very busy background and you really want to focus on the subject. So it just depends on the, on the setting. Um, and like I mentioned, you can do action shots. Like here, you see this, you almost can feel the motion of this young man here, um, you know, throwing the, um, the material or catching the material, you're not sure, but you really feel that it's dynamic. So you can also take pictures like that. Um, one second here, oh yeah. Um, a couple tips that help a lot is to get closer to the person. Um, this will allow you to really capture their face, facial expressions in a very clear way and look at the light. So just repeating, uh, pay attention to the way the light is falling on the, on the subject. Avoid direct flash. Uh, sunlight is really harsh during the middle of the day. So it's best, the best lighting is around sunrise and sunset. So that way you have a softer, nicer glow on the people. So those are just some Ex some really important tips on how to create a powerful photo. But like I said, there is a big scope for many things. So you can take a close up portrait, you can take a full body portrait, you can take them in action walking in their surroundings, you can have them doing something. Um, the, the important thing is that the, the photo is clear and that you know who the subject is, but there's a lot of room for freedom to, to capture it in any way you want. All right, any questions yet? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Um, now here's something very, very important. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you captured the powerful quote, because the, the story from the person is equally as important as the photo. We need both the photo and the story. 
Um, really important here is before conducting the interview, you have to tell them a bit about the project and you have to ask them for permission. Um, and there is a link here to the media release form, which I will open so you can see it. Um, it is very standard, um, giving consent to the, to the partners of the project to use the photo. This is very standard. And here actually you can, you can, you, you can put multiple names and people on here if you're doing a group. So you just have to make sure that they sign this and then, um, scan it or take a picture of it and, um, and keep it and, and we will, and for each of the projects that you use, uh, sorry. Um, back to the to the slides. Um, one second. All right. So here's a couple tips. Um, it depends how you approach this. Some people feel comfortable um, for the field advocates. They feel comfortable um, just going somewhere and talking to people. So here's some tips. Choose someone who is little um, so that they'll might have more time to talk to you. Um, the time of the day matters and um, think about the time when people will mostly have time to talk and that they're not in a rush. Um, be friendly and non-confrontational. Uh, approach them from the side rather than the front. Um, smile, make sure your camera or your phone isn't at sight at first because they won't understand or they may feel uneasy. And free yourself up to make eye contact and listen intently. Um, you can consider actually recording it on a phone. You can even do the audio or the video if you want first and then take the photo and then later on transcribe the interview or pick the parts of it that you like the most so that um, they don't have to repeat themselves. And often they may share a lot of stuff and you may want to take some of the other things they say for other materials. Um, make them comfortable. A lot of people may not know what to say from the beginning. Uh, some qu a question we've used is, what is your greatest struggle on a daily basis? So this is like a very open-ended question that um, can trigger a response that is related oftentimes to the SDG. So they may say something like, they're having trouble making ends meet because they don't have a job. And so that's a simple thing that many people can relate to and that will start they will start talking a bit more about perhaps their personal situation, or it could be anything. It could be um, in their school or in their work, they feel that they're experiencing discrimination because, you know, of something about their sex or their, or their orientation or something. So it will start to get them to talk. It's an open-ended question to get them to talk. Um, here is very important, ensure a variety of subjects if you can. We like seeing, um, we would love to portray all the voices. So even can be um, with permission children or, or elderly, people from different groups, people who have disabilities, people who are um, minorities, so any range or people in traditional clothes as well. Um, and here's something really uh, good to know. They don't have to be random. You can start with a friend, a family, um, like I said, school, work, university clubs, um, church or um, uh, faith-based organizations, um, really any or your own youth organization. It can be from any existing network that you already have and you can start to, to, to talk to them. And all right, so another reminder, they have to sign the media release form. And here's something very important, high resolution photos. So um, if you take it on your phone, um, it needs to be the file that's directly on your phone. Um, just a case in point, if you share your photo on Facebook or WhatsApp and then later on you save it again, it loses the quality and it's really hard for us to use that. We want it to be the original and high resolution. So what that means, if you take the photo, um, it's on the hard drive of your phone and you take that file, that's the file that you use to upload or um, if you upload it to the computer or um, something I do, you can take your photos from your phone and have it upload to Google Drive from your phone so that the original file is there. So you, we need the photo. We need what the SDG priority is, and it could be multiple. Um, the story in their own words, um, English and the original language if possible. Um, this is optional, the name and age. So that's completely optional. They can be completely anonymous. Um, just sometimes like 
some people will really want to share their age. Maybe they're like a 16 year old entrepreneur that did something amazing and the age is really something that helps or, you know, so it depends on the person if they're comfortable and the location, the city and the country. Um, sometimes the people are traveling and they're from somewhere else and they're going somewhere else. You can also put that that information too as well. Um, the photo I showed earlier about the young man from Myanmar who had a conference in Singapore. So he's obviously not from Singapore, he was there for a conference. So it's, you know, so people know, it was in his testimony that he was from Myanmar. So people know a bit more about where the person is from. Um, and very important, you're gonna wonder, how do I upload them? Um, I will show you actually how it works on Flickr. So um, I showed you that, um, let me show you the, the, this Flickr gallery from the previous group that's all like a full, uh, it's a Flickr with everyone. Um, what you need to do to submit the photos is to upload the original high resolution photo to the My World Flickr. And here is the username and password. Um, I'm gonna show you, uh, Let's see, we can, so I logged in already to Flickr and I'm gonna show you actually how to upload it. So when you're logged on to Flickr, you can see there's like a little cloud on the top right with an arrow. You click that um, and here you can drag and drop or put the photos here. So I'm actually gonna put a few test photos here so you can see what happens. I'm gonna just put two test photos here. So I dragged it from my, from my desktop. So now there's two test photos here. So here, when you upload the photos, um, here is where you should put um, the, um, let me see, how did I, the title, it can be, um, um, you can put, the, I, would, I would suggest here to put the, put the country. And then here in the description is where you would paste the, the caption from the person and your name. Um, I'm actually gonna show you a few so you understand what I mean. So um, if I just click one here, so this is an example of from an uh, advocate in Cambodia. If you see here, this has just a little bit of information, but it has the quote. Um, it actually, in this case, he actually identified the name of the subject. And then it says here, captured by. Um, it's very important to put uh, who you are. So I know, we know who submitted it. And if there's any issue, we can go back to you to contact you um, if there's any issue. So. Um, that is the information that you should upload in the picture. I'll, I'll just click another one so you can see here. Yeah, the same, um, the quote, this person identified themselves and it's captured by. So please include that information um, here. So you would put the quote here, um, the city and the, the country, and then you put captured by your name. And then here, if you would like to include um, other social media information about yourself. But um, for now, the most important is, is this information. And like I said, you can also put the quote in your native language as well. So this is just a test. And then you just upload them here and it will, this is a dedicated Flickr account just for the My World Advocates program. So you, this is how you would upload them. Um, I'll just show that again. Um, and again, everyone will have access to it. So that means you actually have the access to delete other people's or change other people. So just be very careful. Um, the password is here um, and please don't change the password. <laughs> if there's any issues, um, actually my, my uh, e we will re we reset the password for whatever reason, but let's just be careful when you do that. Um, and to alert the team that you've actually uploaded something, actually after this webinar, I'm going to create a post on the Facebook group and say, um, please inform us of the progress of Humans Admired. And in the comments, you can tag me right there and say that you have uploaded. So I know how to check the Flickr and see what the new content is. Um, what we're gonna do with that content is um, we will review it and every so often um, it, I can, uh, we will curate them to find the best and the strongest content and we will use it for social media. However, the Flickr is public and people can share the whole link to the Flickr 
um, to see the whole collection of photos. So that will be accessible and that will also be shared. But we will go through them and pick the strongest ones, um, which will, like I said, I showed some examples, like really strong photos, really strong quotes, and perhaps we'll use them thematically for different moments um, based on the content. So yeah, that's a lot of information, I know, but um, it's a really, really exciting, exciting thing to do. Um, and here's a bit more um, information. So some of you are online advocates and not field advocates. So I just want to be clear that um, going out and taking pictures of other people, that is something that field advocates would do. Um, but if you're an online advocate and you're wondering how to participate, um, one thing is you can talk to the field advocates in your country and you can share, they can share content with you and maybe they need help with transcribing or other things you can work together to create or maybe even translation. You can work together for the content that perhaps they capture. But um, an exciting thing that an online advocate could do is crowdsourcing. So you actually don't need to take the photos yourselves. You can ask your online community to send you the photos and stories. Of course, you have to manage this on your own, um, uh, please do not share the Flickr uh, password with other people. Um, each advocate sh should be in charge of uploading it themselves because I don't want, we don't want the Flickr account to just be everywhere because we don't know what could happen. Like you said, people may accidentally delete things. So if you are an online advocate or even a field advocate and you would like to do a crowdsource mechanism, um, you can have people email them to you. You can have them do it another way. I will say that try, um, please try to get the high resolution. If people WhatsApp or send them to you on Facebook, it will be low res. So perhaps email or other file transfer services. Um, and this could be really exciting. You can do online challenges based on certain days. And I actually want to show you a really nice selection um, of photos that actually the UNDP office in Sweden, they crowdsourced their uh, Humans of My World series. And as I'll show you, the photos are actually very good. And people took these photos and they, um, let's see, it's just loading. People took these photos and submitted them. So the office didn't actually take the pictures themselves. Uh, people submitted the photos. Um, uh, it's, it's just pretty slow loading right now. Um, and this is also actually, I had it in another slide. This is a Google slide that's like formatted with a logo and a quote, which is, is also a template for social media cards. So um, this is something you could also use, which I'll explain shortly. Um, it's, it's very slow, yeah. but um, I'm just showing you this, all of these photos are crowdsourced. Nadine? Yes, we have quite a number of questions that came in actually. Uh, why you are okay, yeah, let's stop now. Uh, and those student cards are amazing. I've never seen those before. They really are very nice. The colors and the, the, the portraits are really amazing. So yeah. going back to the question, there was a couple of questions about the media release form. Yeah. Uh, Namita from Nepal was asking, how do I get the consent if the person doesn't know how to sign? Uh, you know, some people in my village, they never touched a pen and pencil in their life. Yeah, so um, if you read it to them, and uh, if you can translate to them, and you get a verbal, um, a verbal approval that you, you, that you get, um, you are responsible for getting it. So every advocate who does it, uh, you, if you get their verbal approval, you can record it or you can just, you can um, sign it yourself. Um, but just that you are confirming that you got it and you just have to be clear. This is a very good question. You have to be clear what it's about and what it's for so they understand. But you can do it orally. You can do it orally and they can. Oh, it looks like the, your line jumped a little bit, Christina. If you can just repeat maybe the last sentence. So you oh, can yeah. Do it so I was just yeah. saying that the oral approval is fine and the advocate has to confirm that they got their approval themselves. So the advocate is responsible for saying that if the approval came through. Great. There was a similar question from Bowie who was reconfirming permission means oral permission or do we need paper sign permission? So you um, just... When, when, um, 
when the oral permission is fine, just that, the, like I said, the advocate is responsible for obtaining the oral permission, but when possible, um, written is preferred when, when it is possible with the community. Great. Uh, the next question was from Jenan. Uh, she was asking if the interviewee nationality is from abroad, but they currently are living and working in a different country, uh, can we, what, what location should we put? Their country of origin or their country of residence? Their nationality um, or their country normally, of residence? Yes, good question. And I did mention this a little bit. Normally, uh, we, we capture them of where they were taken. But if the person would like to say, or maybe it's important to their story, they might say like, I am an immigrant from this country to this country. They may say it in their testimony, but if it's just not relevant to the person's story, then we just say where it came from because we may not know. So sometimes it comes out naturally and sometimes, um, so it's really just discretion, but the most important thing is just where the photo was taken. Great. Another very good question from Salwa. So she works with uh, refugees mm -hmm. uh, and she wanted to know, I work with refugees very often and considering their citizenship status, which country should I put in the media release form? Um, yeah, so the media release form is not going to be shared. It's for our internal purposes. So you can just put where they were located when you spoke to them. That's fine. Great. Uh, Malik uh, would like to know if there is a limit uh, to the number of pictures and stories you upload. So um, there is no limit, of course, although I would like to advocate to promote um, quality over quantity. So people can upload as many as they like, but um, you just, I mean, everyone should know that only very few will be promoted through social media channels from the UN. Um, it's up to you if you are very ambitious and you would like to capture, but I would like to say, um, if possible, try to focus on the diversity of the sustainable development goals. Uh, oftentimes we get, which is great, but we get a lot of stories on education and very little perhaps and maybe all of them. If you can, uh, try to get uh, a really complete series is if you can get one story for each goal, at least a very powerful one, um, and try to prioritize what's strongest per goal. But like I said, you can collect as many as you want as long as they're high quality. So yeah, you stress that enough. Good quality pictures, high resolution, yeah. a good quote, and uh, ideally also in local language. When yeah. you think about it, to make a good use of my word story, it requires quite a lot of time. A good picture, a good quote, the media release form, framing it and putting it into the, the visual. So uh, in the past, for previous advocates, they wouldn't do 30 stories. They would do 10, but they were very powerful. If you get to 17, one for each SDG, I personally would be very impressed. Yeah, and I will say one thing that perhaps I would like to do based on the content is at least one or two. All right, I think uh, Christina's line has jumped again. So again, she was emphasizing uh, quality over quantity. Better to have fewer good ones rather yeah. than bad ones. Yeah, sorry about that. I think my internet is, is not that, um, uh, is going out. Um, any other questions? Yes, there's one from uh, Nana. Uh, I think Nana, I can't remember if you're based in uh, Singapore or, or China. Nana is in China, I remember that now. Um, do we have to make sure that the interviewees have answered the survey when talking with them and photographing them? Um, so, it is highly recommended. Um, if they do the survey first, then they already know a bit more about the project and they can even talk about it directly after. Um, it's highly recommended, but it's not required. Great. Uh, another question from Mark, which I think is a, be a question better suited for next uh, webinar with you. It's about the possibility to create your own Facebook group. Uh, and so I think we might keep that question for next webinar. But the answer is yes. Uh, but you can market very specifically My World 2030 Philippines in your case, or you really distinctly make sure that it doesn't look like it's a UN page, but just an advocate's page. But we will go back to this uh, in the next webinar again. Yeah. Great. Um, and another, and another question. Yeah. Another question from RV in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, when people send photos of themselves online, do they still need to send a permission document? Thank you. 
Um, they do not, but you, they need to be informed about it. Um, perhaps it's a tricky question, but they need to know, I mean, they need to have confirmed that they have read it. Um, so either you send them the link and they just, if the, if it's through email, they respond and say, yes, I agree. Or, or they were sent it to begin with. So they just need to have read it and acknowledged it. Great. Another question from Roop, uh, going, talking about the Flickr account. So yes. everyone took note of the password uh, yeah. and the login information. So don't change the login information. Don't delete other advocates' yeah. work, right? Yes. And the question from Roop is, how do you add uh, your Twitter handle or your Twitter group list, uh, as you mentioned, as you just mentioned for Flickr? Oh, you yes. That's a very good question. Um, that was an example of, um, let me open a new window and I will show you actually, although I, you know what, I will save that for next week because that is something very focused to social media. So don't worry about it right now. I will, I will include that in my presentation for next week. All right. Sounds good. I am taking note of the pending questions. Uh, Sarwa, thank you for, and Jainan, thank you for, and Avi, thank you for your great answers. And Robin's question was the same one uh, as Mark about Facebook groups. So we'll also keep that one for next week. I think Great. that's it for now. You can maybe continue because there's a lot of ground still to cover. Yeah. So thank you for your questions, everyone. Continue put posting them um, on, you know, on the group and that, that's great. Great. Um, great. I just wanted to oops, exit this. I just wanted to go very quickly to show you the Sweden um, series because I think it's very um, inspirational and this is actually created with just Google Slides um, and Google Slides template which is I will I will share this so that people can um, can use it um, like I said these were crowdsourced but the I mean the photos are very professional quality in this case I just want to show you Your, your line just jumped a little bit, Christina. So okay, we didn't get sorry. Hear about so, the last. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I will get into this also next week as well. But um, you can create social media cards with your photos because oftentimes um, putting a part of the quote, I showed you the Sweden ones, they were very simple um, and very short quote. And then people could. If it's on a Twitter or Facebook, people could click to see the rest. Um, here's just an example of the ones we've done for the last series. You know, it's just the photo and on the side, it has a quote with the icons. So it's just very simple. But um, you create your own social media cards and put them on your own social media. Um, some of them we may use as well, but um, uh, you can upload both the clean photo and the social media cards on Flickr, but I would recommend the priority is the clean original photo. Um, and the social media is secondary and it's not required. Um, some people upload just the clean photos as a gallery on their social media. Uh, some of them you just put the photo on its own. So there's many things you can do with that. Um, I will show you quickly. Um, uh, so I showed you the Sweden ones. I'm going to show you, um, let me see, uh, Canva. One second, let me open it in a new window. I think I have to log in. One second, new share. Uh -huh. Share screen. Okay, can you see the Canva screen? Yes. Okay, um, so canva.com uh is a very easy also social media image generator um, i'm just going to show you really quickly um, there are so many templates on here as you can see here you can create anything a flyer for something um, logos uh, cards so all of these are templates that are very easy to use um, I'm going to just show you a very, very simple um, card here that I made very, very simple. 
So I'll just show you how easy it is to use Canva. Um, in this case, um, I pick the square. You could use an Instagram. This picture right here, it's just, I just dragged it in. And as you can see, you can drag it and move it around. Uh, this is, uh, the bottom was a box. It's very a simple social media card used for the global week to act for SDGs and it's very simple. Christina, your line uh, jumped a bit again so we didn't hear the last two sentences. Yeah so basically I'm simple look which is just an example you can see all these uh, images look the same, like they look very similar. And it was very easy to just create one and replicate it. Um, you can do the same for the photos that you use. You could use a similar format like this and then put the quote on the bottom. Um, you, can, you can see what you think is best. Um, I will, what I do, as well but this is just I suggest that you play around with Canva because it's pretty easy to create things um, and also if you use like Instagram stories or Instagram it's easy to put the picture there and type over the picture on there on Instagram and you can save that file and actually use it as well and keep reusing it um, within the Instagram platform uh, let me go back to the other screen uh, okay, so um, this, I just want to stress um, the logos. So you can use the My World logo, as you see here, and the SDG. also the my world trial award which we are continuing to update with more material but you can use this on all of your material um, do not use the un logos without prior consent which is what we mentioned before so do not use them it's in the guidebook so uh, don't use those unless you have prior consent which needs to be agreed upon and all right and another thing is this is completely optional and this is something that is at personal discretion but i want to share that some people uh do physical exhibits and i'm going to show you some of them uh they this some of them can be professional some of them can't be i'm just showing you so some of the wonderful photos uh this is an example of how we've used them at exhibits these are banners these are banners of course this requires professional printing but you don't need to do that uh, this is another professional exhibit, but I do want to show you something. Um, this is actually an exhibit I did at Kosovo many years ago. And actually this, as you can see, um, these are, this, uh, just as an example, this is, no, no, no one is required to do any type of exhibit, but if you are involved in an event or, or something and you would like to do something, you could print on your own. You can um, see if you have a partner for printing, but this is completely optional. Here in this exhibit in Kosovo, if you see there's like a rope and the and the 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 photos are just printed on paper and we glued them to cardboard and we put holes through them and then we just hung them and they look cool like photos that were hanging, you know, in a like as if they were drying and this is um, actually at a, a film festival there. Um, so this is an example of something simple that someone could do. But again, this is really optional and I just wanted to show you what um, exciting things but like I said the best photos and some of the ones that you contribute can be featured in UN exhibits in the future so um, that's something that you can um, be excited about. Um, brief Avi, Avi is uh, commenting and saying exhibits are amazing and indeed your Kosovo exhibit is really a perfect example at how with low cost you can actually feature your own work you don't need to wait for us to, to promote it. You can promote your own work at a very little cost. So I think that's a great example. Yes, Thank yes. You. 
Definitely. Um, uh, this, anything you can do, like I said, um, it is really up to you, but if you, yeah, would like to do it and you can, you can do it in any way. And like I said, this Kosovo exhibit, I had a lot of fun here and it's very simple. And, um, I mean, maybe if there's a space in your school or somewhere you would like to do that. Um, and then also if you do take a photo series of a certain community, um, they like to see the photos of themselves. So it makes them very, very excited. So, um, but again, it could also be done digitally if there's a projector and you can, you can even showcase the photos as like a presentation or even in your university and do a slideshow. That's also something you can do to show the photos. Um, we, I know we don't have a lot of time and a lot of people have a lot of questions about Medium. I actually wanna show you really quickly how to log on to media or how to use your Medium account to post to our blog. Um, so I'm gonna show you that really, really fast. Um, so here, actually, I'm logged on as myself. Um, and here is how you can actually post on our blog. So new story, I would put here new story. Um, and this is just a test, testing, um, testing for my world blog. Okay, so you type your story, uh, you put your picture, you can actually put here, you can click to put a picture here. As you can see, it's very easy, add an image and you can um, take a, I'm just gonna put a test picture here. So there's a test picture here that I put. You can um, move it to the side. Uh, you can, um, here's my, my world photo. So very easy to use Medium and this is what's gonna, and if you wanna submit it to the My World blog, here's very important. You click the three dots and you click Add to publication. This is very important. Add to publication, you press it, and you can select the My World app, uh, publication if your account is set up. Um, some of you said that you still haven't received the email invitation. Um, I put a thread on the Facebook groups to put your email there, and I will try to resend them again. I have to resend them one by one. Um, sometimes they get stuck in your spam folder, so uh, please bear with me. But um, here, if I select the My World, one, um, it says here I submit it and it will be submitted as a draft. So I click submit and um, here you can actually put hashtags, you can check the title, you can change what's the picture, that's the preview. Um, and of course this won't be published because I'm gonna submit it as a draft, but you can actually um, submit the publication and submitting story, story submitted. So this means that it was submitted to the My World blog and my team or me or someone from my team will review it and then we'll post it actually if it's um sometimes we may edit it a bit or we may ask you for some more questions um and let me just show you actually um today uh Roop Sunar submitted a story right now there are two stories that are published when the stories are published um they will be posted here and um you can share this link and actually um, today, this is the new post from Roop Sunar. Um, you have your own link that you can use to share it. Um, and that's the link you can use to put everywhere. You can even put it on your profiles. You can share it everywhere. It's a link. And the, what's nice is that the story that you submit, it's also posted on your own personal profile. So I believe if we go to his, it's a bit slow right now. It will be cross posted to your own personal profile medium and also to the my world medium but um i will go through this a bit more next week um because um it's a lot to go through today i know um i do want to show you a really nice example from a previous advocate in thailand um where she actually interviewed some really amazing um, entrepreneurs and change makers in thailand and as you can see here um she she interviewed these students and they had this really great program about recycling and you see all the photos she put together and then she actually her photos were all also humans of my world stories and um and she has quotes from there so this is an example of using the photos and putting them in a blog post um and she uh, she has a lot of different initiatives that she profiled in thailand so um 
like I said, this is a bit more journalistic, but um, it's something that you could do. And here it's, and this, this, is a, this is a humans of my world Twitter right there of the girl on her own. Um, and then there's quotes in there. Um, this is done though a bit more as an article and a bit more informative. If someone is interested in doing it like that, these are different entrepreneurs and change makers. Um, here she even interviewed um, a, a professor who started this project, some quotes from him. So this is an information. Um, and I, I think I'm going to end it here, Nadine, and save the other content for next week. But um, I'd like to see if there's any questions now. So far, no additional questions. It was indeed quite a lot of, uh, of things to go through. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, uh, for next week, there's quite a lot to go through as well, right? There's a lot. Of <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, maybe. Well, I guess I'll mention, um, I'll mention one thing that um, I think people will get very excited about. I'll mention two things that are just more informative um, and that may get people also excited so i'm just gonna do that it's just the last two slides um the butterfly initiative i'll share that next week but um let me now oh, your your line uh, skipped again a bit so we didn't hear the last uh, the last sentence or two you were just about to start talking about my world uh, 360. yeah Okay, great. Can you see the screen? The, yes. um, I just have to make it bigger. Okay. Uh, ju this just initiative is um, very, very quickly. Um, we have an initiative called My World 360 where youth create 360 films and they submit it to us and we're actually going to showcase a new set at the UN General Assembly. Um, we will be sharing the, in, the files on myworld360.org and these are really cool, but you can watch them even on your phone, on your computer. Um, and it's just another way to, it's like humans in my world, but 360. You can contribute to them in the future or you can share them. So this is just so that you know that this is another initiative that exists. And one thing I wanna mention briefly, um, is we have um, the UN SDG Action Campaign runs the UN SDG Awards program every year. And um, actually what's really exciting is that um, the, the Youth Force uh, 2030 in the Philippines won the People's Choice Award last year, which is really, really exciting. Um, just briefly, um, this is just, it's just to think about for the future. But for um, those of you who really, really work hard and put your heart into it and really accomplish a lot, you can apply for our awards program. And we have different categories, mobilizer, storyteller, campaigner, visualizer, connector, includer, and creative. I just want you to just know that this exists and something to, to know about. Um, and you can, learn about, you can learn about it at the awards website. I just wanted to tell you that this is um, something that's there. And we do um, some, there's always opportunity. Like I said, last year, we had the people's choice with the um, Youth Force in the Philippines winning. So just, just keep that in mind and you can take a look at that, but um, you don't need to do anything. Thank you, Christina, for, for this overview. It was very useful. Um, I think people are getting their questions ready, but I have one for you, actually. Yeah. So among the online advocates, especially, we have quite a number of journalists. Yes. People working for TV and broadcasting uh, organizations, people having radio shows. So That's what great. would be your tips uh, specifically for radio? What would be your tips specifically for TV? Uh, and how can people really kind of portray SEG stories uh, in a nice light. What would be your tips on one side for radio shows and for TV shows? Can work really well for TV and radio. Um, if, if you do the stories and you find someone with such an interesting and compelling story that helps explain the sustainable development goals and they're willing, uh, based on the rules from your radio or TV program, they, might, they will have their own release form. Uh, you could interview them. You could interview them um, on your program 
and really feel um so it's like a, a addition to just the photo it really you can interview them and you the way their testimony if it's very strong it will help you and the audience understand sustainable development well, a specific one you know so the really compelling stories i'll tell you are very newsworthy and very very something will people will really relate to people really like human stories people they can relate if they just see texts like end poverty gender equality it doesn't mean Um, then that is something very important. Um, something I also forgot to mention about the online advocates, you can actually submit a story of yourself. So you can take a photo of yourself and if you have, and you can actually write a testimony yourself. And that's something that you can also use as material if you're an, an online advocate. Uh, other thing is you saw that article I shared about Thailand. Um, you can um, reach out online or through other channels to people you admire, like I said, change makers, entrepreneurs, your mentors, you can interview them as well. And you can even get quotes even via via email or other ways. Um, and they and you can create the interview. But um, main thing is use the human stories as a thread to showcase something powerful. And within that, you know, you can promote my world, you can promote the topic. So I would suggest that but if you have something very specific, especially about media and TV, I do have another colleague in my team who's are like comms and press specialists and will be able to give you more specific guidance, especially if it's a, a larger opportunity and we may be able to give you better advice. Um, but if it's creating your own content, I would suggest to start with that. You mentioned Jules from the Philippines. Jules uh, was also a TV host himself. He had a yeah. show called Home 30 uh, in uh, Tagalog, I believe, in local language where he was talking about young people and their engagement in the SDGs and what young Filipinos can do about sustainable development in their communities. So that was a good example of an advocate having his own TV show um, and really talking about SDGs uh, almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, so besides uh, TV uh, producers, we have also a few photographers, um, in the, especially in the online advocates group. I remember, I think, Parimita, uh, was saying in a short bio that she best expresses herself through um, photography. So I think a lot of what you described at the very beginning, all the tips about good pictures and angles and quality and colors and contrast, all of these were, were very good uh, tips. If you need to know more, there's a lot of free online courses about uh, you know, designing, design and, and photography. So you can also look um, on platforms, um, Online, we can I can probably put together a list of places. Coursera has a lot, and there's a lot of other free online webinars specifically on how to take good pictures, uh, basic tips in design. If you want to go a bit further, uh, even more. Uh, but of course, if you're if you're a photographer, there's always room for improvement. And a lot of the examples that Christina shared today were very good. So you saw there's really a lot of different things: close-ups, action shots, uh, different angles. Uh, young people, elderly people, different SDGs, different places, so not only in capital cities, but also trying to capture the stories in local communities, in remote and hard to reach areas, that's very important. Uh, gender balance also in the pictures you take. Uh, it could be a single person or a group picture. There's really a wide range of ways you can do this. And looking at the Flickr account, looking at uh, Christina's social media accounts, the SDG Action Campaigns account, you will find a lot of inspiration about how to do this. I think a good practice that you highlighted was having uh, the quote in local language as well, in English and local language, and then I think inserting the SDG that it tackles at the top, maximum yeah. three SDGs. I think that, that is really a good practice. So the photo, the text, and then having the SDG icons, I think is, is really, uh, really good. Uh, RV is asking a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we picture a team in the humans of my world? So yes. Yes. yes, you can picture a team. Yes, yes. Very good. Um, so if anyone else has any other questions about how to create a social media card, I think one of the things that advocates asked in the past actually was about those templates. So you showed us on your Canva, you have the uh, global week for action kind of like frame and the humans of my world like all of these templates 
um, can they yeah, make, so make I'm available? I'm going to share them. Yeah, more. I will upload more to the Trello so that people can have um, guidance there, uh, Google Slides and um, the Canva template. So I will be uploading them uh, before our next meeting so that you will have access to them there. That's great. And the Trello boards. The Trello boards are uh, this online sharing tool that is very visually easy to use and appealing. And then you have this kind of like cards and you can really browse through them and find a lot of, of stuff there. So there's a My World uh, Trello board uh, where you can find a lot of information. Uh, Namita has a question. Um, yeah. Can I use a picture from a daily newspaper if I find it interesting for the story? So the um, you no. have to, hello? You should take a, she should take her own picture, right? You should, I encourage you to take your own picture, but if you would like to use it on your own social media to promote the sustainable development goals, uh, you have to properly credit the publication and the photographer. Um, and so normally if it's from a newspaper medium at the bottom of the picture, it will say something like the photographer name or the copyright name. You have to include that. But um, we encourage you to, to use your own. But um, if you would like to use ones you find for awareness materials, um, you can use that. But um, we wouldn't include that in the Humans of My World um, series overall, though. That's a good point about uh, copyright. When we yeah. talked about the media release form and the importance of consent. And then, of course, there are rules about copyrights. And these are uh, legal rules. So be careful where you source your material. And whatever you use that is not yours, make sure you cite the source very clearly. And especially for professional photographers, it's very important to uh, credit their work. Otherwise, they become invisible. So really be very careful with other people's stories, images, uh, and, and other people's work. Yep, yep. Um, and again, though, all of the humans of my world photos, uh, you can use that for your materials. So the previous ones, you can look at the Flickr album, you can use that for um, creating materials that's free for you to use. So there's no issue with that. Great. Let's see if there's more questions in the chat. Uh, not so far. We still have about 20 advocates with us. So we can maybe give them a minute or two to come yeah. up with, uh, with more questions. And in the meantime, we can maybe explain what the next webinar will be about. It will be, you know, a different aspect of this work. So really looking at social media platforms and also uh, digital marketing uh, tips. So we have the chance to have Christina who can explain all of these different things. So really two very complementary webinars, how to design, how to take good pictures, and then how to promote them on the, on the online platforms. So really two complementary uh, skills. Yeah, I also just want to share that um, beyond the humans of my world stories, um, the journey is important. So for the field advocates who, create, who go out in their community, um, if you like capture information about your journey, so maybe you went there and you met all these people and it's kind of an overarching narrative on what you did there, um, that will be really good for a blog post. So you could create a blog post about how you created the series. So say you went to a village and you took 10 pictures. So you would obviously have the individual photos of each person, but you also want to share your experience doing the interview and how it changed you and your own thoughts. So you can um, create, just, it's more things that you could create that are compelling. So actually you going to that community and creating the stories is a story in and of itself. It's its own story. And like I said, that makes for a very compelling blog posts about how you achieve the photos. But then again, I, same for the online advocates. If you do a crowdsource approach and you get um, a lot of different um, results, you can share how you know diverse it was, how the people that inspired you and how it changed your perspective on things. So in addition to creating this, you're not just behind the camera or the phone, you're also an active participant in creating the whole process. So um, I do, and I remember, um, let me see here, um, if I, let me uh, resume the screen share again. Um, there were, I remember some very compelling stories of a previous advocate that went into their village or a rural community and they shared um, a bit more information about how they did that. Um, I don't know if I can find it up 
really quickly here. But like I said, that's something to keep in mind to capture your thoughts in the whole journey of, of doing it. Um, let me see this story here. Uh, this one, I actually have edited it, but when they said this to me, they had a lot of story about how they found this woman, who she is. I mean, here it says here, she has two children who live in rural villages. It's like the story behind capturing the story is also um, very uh, newsworthy. And for those of you in media and radio, that's also um, something to think about. It's not just the story, it's how you captured the story. Um, so um, yeah, actually here, um, can, you can see, can you see my screen, the Flickr page? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so here, actually this picture here of the family, um, there's actually a quote here from the advocate, which I, I included, it says here, when I heard there was a village that got difficult to find water, I decided to come and the reality's heartbreaking. The villagers have to go far to get clean water. So there's actually a quote here from the advocate, which explains his journey of going there. And there's a bit more context here that this city, they, it's hard for them to get access to clean water. And then there's the quote. Um, the quote is also very powerful. If you just saw the quote, we took water from the well, but I think all of this adds to the depth of the story um, and in a very journalistic way. So of course, not every story is gonna be like this, but um, that information is also very interesting and you can include it all on the Flickr post um, because we may only curate a short quote or if you make your blog post about it, um, that story is very, very compelling. And I'll tell you that we would like to share stories like that about how you really went to find the story and how it kind of changed your perspective. I mean, in this case, it said the advocate heard about it and was so moved that he wanted, uh, that they wanted to go there. And then they went there and then they met this people. And actually the person in the photo is the chairman of the village. So um, that, as I think you can see, is very powerful. And really, I, you know, being a technical person and writing reports all day, I can tell you the power of stories. And, you know, it's not going to be just limited to uh, uh, the UN social media or to Flickr oh, or no. to Medium or to Facebook. These stories are going to be reported on and taken, you know, uh, to uh, decision makers. So we have a lot of opportunities in September. Um, Christina's team is going to New York and it's going to showcase all these stories. And I can believe me when I say that this is the photos and the stories behind it is way more impactful than uh, graphs and numbers and, um, you know, a, a host of reports. So don't uh, underestimate the power of your stories and the change they can create. Um, Avi is asking a question. And I think after Avi, if you... You might be the last question, so anyone else with a burning question, now is the time. But Avi is asking, there's nothing stopping online advocates to share stories uh, from their field experience, right? Um, Nadine, could you answer that? Well, that's a bit of the fine line. So uh, if you have material already, so we cannot, uh, within the framework of the uh, UNV online volunteering platform, we cannot encourage you to go out in the field uh, and you know, get the stories. But if you have ways to online means, or if you already have the stories, of course, uh, you are more than welcome to publish them. It is just uh, for just the rules and regulations of the UNB online volunteering platform. Uh, your work with us as an online volunteer is only and strictly limited to online activities. Now, if you have a uh, field experience and you, and you do work in the field every day, um, you know, nothing prevents you from taking that work and publishing it as an online advocate, of course. And what Nadine said, if you, you, can, if you can contact the people online, like people you've already been in touch with in the past and you have their photo or you ask them to send you their photo and their story, like I said, that's the crowdsource way, um, that is definitely fine. And no one is going to really check in detail exactly what you do. But like, you know, as long as you follow the, the guidelines from the UN, the online voting platform, everybody uh, is going to be happy. So I guess this is it, uh, Christina, for today. There's a lot of information you shared. So thank yeah. you very, very much for taking the time. I think there's a, uh, maybe a few times in the video where it jumped a little bit, but there are the slides are very detailed and you have a lot of links. Uh, so I'm sure advocates can follow up with any questions. As a reminder, we avoid emails because uh, we are all completely overwhelmed with emails. So any questions, try to go through, scroll down the Facebook group and find the relevant post. 
uh, or if there's nothing there, just create your own new post. And if you tag us, uh, we try to uh, get back to you in a timely manner. We go as fast as we can. We are different staff members working in different places, so sometimes it's a bit, a bit hard. So thank you for your patience. Uh, but again, Facebook group is your first and primary place to look for information. After the guidebooks, of course. All of you have your amazing guidebooks. So, and and uh, thank you, Nadine. And also on the Facebook post about this webinar, um, feel free to comment below that post and uh, tag me or Nadine and ask additional questions there. Alice is saying thank you for the session today. It was very informative and uh, I fully agree. So thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. And uh, an electronic uh, round of applause for Christina. Uh, thank, thank you. you. And uh, we'll see you next week for the next webinar. See you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon and evening, wherever you are.